Welcome back to another video review and today we have the opportunity to take a look at the Transformers Legacy Evolution Deluxe Class Crosscut. So for the contents inside the packaging of this figure, we get Crosscut itself and we get three accessories which is continued being wrapped in the tissue paper which is behind the packaging inside the figure. So don't throw that away without looking for that tissue paper. And then more importantly, it comes with instructions on how to transform this figure. So now that I've zoomed in to take a closer look at Crosscut, check out the details on the head sculpt. For me, the head sculpt is impressive. It has the gray plastic, the blue stripe down the middle of its helmet. It has the red and then also the gray to break up near the ears and where the mouth is. Um, it just looks incredible, man. They did a really good job taking the time to sculpt this uh, head sculpt. And not only that, to actually paint it to make it look like the G1 Crosscut. Now, when it comes to the, the silver painted on the actual vehicle, I definitely like that it is a metallic silver. So, yes, it does have a gloss and it looks good. The Autobot symbol is crisp and clean. It's kind of straight. Um, like I said, I don't have any issues with that. There's no bleeding on it. The front grille of the vehicle looks good. Um, the gray plastic on it, I don't mind it so much because I think it's pretty much the same glass gray plastic without the painted silver details on it so it doesn't really bother me because it kind of matches and then looking down at the um, the hips on down to the uh, shins and forearms and knees I have no issue with that it continues the same color paint palette scheme and it works well together so for the articulation on this figure it has the standard articulation as what we receive with the previous uh, molds, for instance, crankcase, uh, skids, and the uh, the GoBot burnout. So just quickly, I'll show it. The arm can go all the way up there. It can rotate all the way around. It is very tight on my figure, so I'm happy. There is no mold degradation, which is incredible. The arm can bend this high. As you see, there is a bicep swivel. The hand, uh, can it swivel? Nope, cannot do that. Or if it can, it's very, very tight and I feel like I'm gonna break it. The leg can kick up this high. It can go out that, that far. Like I said, as you see when I'm moving this, guys, my figure copy is very tight. It can go back this far. The knee does bend 90 degrees and it does have the foot well, ankle rocker right there. And then it does have a waist swivel, as you already know. The wings can go in and out. The head can look left and right. So we have no issues there. So basically, like I said, you get the standard articulation for this deluxe size figure. So let's move on and check out some comparisons. So here we have crosscut in the middle surrounded by fellow other Transformer characters with different scales and different sizes. So I went ahead and put in front Nemesis Prime to show off the core scale compared to the Deluxe Crosscut. And then you have also the, his wave mate, Scrapnel, which appears to be about the same size as Crosscut from head to head. So they're the smaller Autobots and smaller Decepticons in scale. But when you got him lined up beside Hoist, who is a larger deluxe size figure, borderline Voyager. And then you also have a Voyager class twin cast in the back. So yes, he scales very well. And I like that they are continuing with this scaling so that figures don't seem out of place and oversized. But scale well in your complete collection of all the characters. 
and more importantly, my last comparison, here we have skids with crosscut and crankcase. Yes, crankcase looks like he doesn't fit, but yes, he shares the same overall mode and transformation design. Now, there's a slightly different things with crankcase, which you can obviously see between crosscut and skids. But just looking at the group as a whole, from the lower region on down, for basically the waist on down, is practically the same thing. Now, you look at the chest on each figure, they're slightly different, whether it's just coloring or whether it's a new molded piece. But either way, I like all three of these and how they look in robot mode. Now it's time for transformation, but instead of doing that today, I'm gonna to keep the video short because it is the same mold, different head scope of a previous figure. So you'll be able to click on my review of the Transformers Legacy Skids to see the actual transformation if you would like to know how to transform this figure, which is the same mold. Now that we have him transformed into its alt mode, this figure looks incredible. Let's take these off just so we can see the paint details as I was telling you about. Look at it, the way the light is reflecting off the hood. Yes, I'm definitely digging the red wheels. I think that's pretty sweet. Um, yeah, the figure just looks really good as a whole. It turned out well in my opinion. The red stripe going throughout the sides of the vehicle. The red stripe matching the tires and the rims. You can't beat that. So this reminds me of a like tricked out, you know, car that someone's driving around in real life. And here we are for comparisons. Here we have all three of the shared molds together that I've owned. And they look good together. Of course, yes, this is Decepticon. He's a little different. But these two right here are exactly the same as you can see. There's not really much of a difference on skids and crosscut except the paint. So yes, just trying to get all three of these in so you can see them hopefully. They are pretty much the same figure, and it is a great mold. So yes, with all this being said previously throughout my video, now it's time for the Yarbrough figure grading system to take place. So if you've been watching my review up to this far, just to summarize, you already know how I feel about this figure. The first category is the paint details. And the paint details, in my opinion, I feel is terrific. With the multiple shiny silver paint throughout this figure and the exterior on the car and also on the knee pads where the knees are and also the black and the little bit that picks out and the details in the head. For me, it's just outstanding. I have no complaints with it and I'm actually satisfied for what they gave us for the paint job. For additionally... The next category is the molding, and the molding on this figure is the same as the previous mold for skids. There's no changes except that each part is molded in different plastic, and the head has been changed to fit the newer G1 character. So I have no issues with that. Moving on to the last category, the playability and the execution on this figure is spot on. The vehicle still rolls as, as, as it did with skids. Now as crosscut, there's no hindrance in that. And not only that, the robot mode on this figure is painted terrifically and it's wonderfully done. And I like the metallic on it to make this character different from skids and because it's a G1 representation of another figure that was in the cartoon, it's perfect. If you're interested in picking up a copy of this figure, I end up getting my copy from BigBadToyStore.com. As you saw floating throughout my video, their logo. Ultimately, I end up paying $25.99 plus taxes and later on with shipping. So if you're interested in picking this up, the link will be posted below. And you're welcome to go on over there and check to see if they still have this item in stock. Yes, my order was a pre-order and it was filled quickly and I'm satisfied with their customer service. As always, please like, comment, 
share, and subscribe. By doing these four actions, it shows my channel a tremendous amount of support and also positive feedback. Thank you once again for taking your time spent watching my video. Until next time, yeah bro, I'll see you soon.